The name Charles Darwin is well known to many people across the world. It's the name most associated with the theory of evolution, a theory that postulates at its core that humans and all other organic life trace back to a common ancestor. In his most famous publication, The Origin of Species in 1859, Darwin stated that it is truly a wonderful fact that all animals and all plants throughout all time and space should be related to each other in groups subordinate to group. Darwin's name has been associated with evolution, but it's also formed a bond with another term, atheism. Richard Dawkins, for example, has claimed that Darwin made it possible to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist. In modern times, Dawkins has probably done the most to promote evolution as an atheistic alternative to religious belief in God. But was Darwin himself an atheist? And did he ever see his theory as an atheistic alternative to Christianity? In short, no. In fact, the truth might be quite a surprise to some. Darwin's aim was never to get rid of Christian faith or God. And early in his life, he actually helped to preserve the relevance of God in the universe in some respects at least with his theory. So let's see how this came about. But first, a brief history of Darwin's early life taken from the Oxford University Press book, Darwin, a very short introduction. Charles Darwin was born in Shrewsbury in 1809. His father was a doctor, son of a more distinguished doctor and speculative evolutionist, Erasmus Darwin. His mother was a daughter of Josiah Wedgwood, founder of the pottery, she died when Charles was eight, leaving him to be brought up largely by his sisters. He was educated at the local public school and went to Edinburgh University as a medical student. Unable to face confrontation with the seriously ill, Darwin abandoned medicine and moved from Edinburgh to Cambridge with the intention of becoming an Anglican priest. While at Cambridge, he became the protege of the professor of botany, John Stevens Henslow through whom he became deeply interested in science and through whose advocacy Darwin was chosen at the age of 22 to go on a surveying voyage with the HMS Beagle as a naturalist. By the time Darwin released The Origin of Species, he had certainly lost his faith. Recalling the events of his life in 1876, he stated that this belief crept over me at a very slow rate but was at last complete. The rate was so slow that I felt no distress and have never since doubted even for a single second that my conclusion was correct. I can indeed hardly see how anyone ought to wish Christianity to be true for if so, the plain language of the text seems to show that the man who does not believe and this would include my father, brother and almost all my best friends will be everlastingly punished and this is a damnable doctrine. One of Darwin's arguments against the Christian God was that he could not see how a loving God could allow such suffering and death in nature. On a more personal and theological level, as we've just seen, the idea of family members being sent to hell was anathema to him. In this light, Darwin felt his unbelief was justified. This might seem like a direct shift to atheism, however this would be a mistaken interpretation of what Darwin's position really was. Historians of science have unanimously agreed that Darwin never turned to atheism, rather he shifted to agnosticism and remained in this position for the rest of his life, yet he retained friendships with many of the leading theists of his day. For example, at his funeral in 1882 at Westminster Abbey, one of the ten pallbearers was the 8th Duke of Argyll, one of the most prominent theistic evolutionists of the day. Both he and Darwin remained good friends throughout their lives. Turning towards the science, William Paley, the well-known theologian, had published a hugely popular work, Natural Theology, in 1802, where he argued in effect that the world was a joyful place where everything had been designed by God with a purpose, and a study of the natural world would display this. This book would go on to have a profound influence on Darwin's theory. According to Darwin's biographer James Moore, Darwin at this point, just about a year after his famous voyage, held that God and laws are two means of creation, where one leaves off, the other takes up the job. Darwin conceived of an analogy which he would follow for years to come. This analogy, as Darwin wrote, stated that astronomers might formerly have said that God ordered each planet to move in its particular density. In same manner, God orders each animal created with certain form in certain country. 
but how much more simple and sublime power let attraction act according to certain laws, such are inevitable consequences. The animal be created, then by fixed laws of generation, such will be their successors. Let the powers of transport be such, and so will be the forms of one country to another. Let geological change go on at such a rate, so will be the number and distribution of the species. Why did Darwin propose this idea? Well, according to him, when we opt to suggest why something has been created, i.e. the purpose behind something's creation, we sink into contemptible queries and lower the creator to the standard of one of his weak creations. At this point in his life, Darwin saw his theory as more of a defence of theism, arguing that, according to evolution, experiences such as suffering and death were actually a normal part of life due to the continual and random nature of law. In contrast, Paley's view had seen God's hand in every aspect of life which for Darwin inevitably meant that suffering and death were directly at the hands of God. Darwin's view was in one respect a type of theodicy. Again, when Darwin's theory eventually came out in 1859, he didn't see it as a blow against Christianity and he felt that a believer should not see his theory as trying to do away with their beliefs. In a letter to his friend, the Christian botanist Asa Gray in 1860, Darwin wrote that, Certainly, I agree with you that my views are not necessarily atheistical. Lastly, a comment that has largely been overlooked by historians today, yet gives great insight into Darwin's personal thoughts in relation to the implications of apparent design in nature, come during the late 19th century when the Duke of Argyll, Darwin's longtime friend and gentlemanly combatant, told of a remarkable conversation in his 1898 book, What is Science, between himself and Darwin, recalling that, Mr. Darwin did me the honour of calling on me in London in one of the last years of his life. In the course of the conversation, he mentioned some extraordinary case of adaptation to special function, and I said, Well, Mr. Darwin, I cannot see any explanation of such facts except the working of mind. On this, he paused for a moment, and then said slowly and emphatically, that often comes upon me with overpowering force, but then at other times, and he drew his hands across his eyes with an expressive gesture as if to indicate the disappearance of a vision. Although today some vocal voices signpost Darwinian evolution as a naturally atheistic theory, in reality, although he did indeed lose his faith, he never turned to atheism and never meant for his theory to justify atheism. The events surrounding Darwin's 1859 publication are very complex and can only truly be understood in light of knowledge about his life and the Victorian Christian context in which he was brought up within. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this brief history on the question of was Darwin an atheist? Be sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll be back with more videos soon.